today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about how we actually create a clasp and add this to a necklace or a bracelet in order for you to be able to take it on and off. So this would be something that you wouldn't use for um, an adjustable necklace or elasticated bracelet. This is what you would more commonly see on a chain neck necklace, um, but it can be used as well as technique can be used when dealing with ribbon or cord. So I'm going to start off by showing you the uh, materials that you'll need to purchase and the tools we're going to be using for this technique. Okay, so to begin with, really simple. You just need two pairs of pliers for this task. I recommend you definitely need a pair of flat nose for these. It doesn't matter if both are flat nose, but you definitely need one pair to begin with. And then in terms of the actual materials we need, I'm going to start from the left side here. You should be familiar with these. These are your jump rings. You're going to need two smaller jump rings, so probably between about three mil and four mil, and then one larger jump ring. I believe this is around between a 10 or 12 millimeter. So, so long as there's a variation inside. So the smaller ones and then one large one. This will be what you actually um when you do up your necklace, this will be the ring for that. So if it's too small, it's going to make it very fiddly and difficult for you to take on and off. So two small jump rings, one larger jump ring. This here is called, I love this name, a lobster claw. That's the technical name for it in jewellery terms. So so called because it looks a little bit like a lobster claw. Okay, so you need one of those for each necklace that you're making. And then here we've got two ribbon end clasps. So when you're looking these up online, they're called either ribbon end or cord end. So they look like this. You can see that there's a hole that we're going to be threading a jump ring through and then three sides. And often at the end, this side, you'll see a little, if the camera's just picking that up, it's a little point as well, which helps. This is what grabs hold of the ribbon or the cord and helps to secure it. And this last one here, I just wanted to show you. This is also, this is the same. This is a ribbon end clasp, but this is a much wider one. So this could be used if you had several strands of ribbon coming from it or thicker ribbon. This is what you would use for that. So I'm now going to show you how to construct all these pieces and turn this piece of ribbon into a necklace that I could then add my pendant onto. So I'm going to start by using two of my round nose pairs of pliers, just because they're my prefer preferred pliers. I will still need the flat nose pliers later on, and that will become clear shortly. But I'm going to start off with one of my smaller jump rings and my rig ribbon clasp ends, and I'm going to thread them up so through the hole. Close the jump ring. And do the same with the other one. Except this time, before I close it, I'm also adding on my lobster lobster clasp. So that goes on as well. And then with this one here, we need to add on the bit larger jump ring because that's where the lobster clasp will thread through. So I'm just threading that on. And because I've got quite a large jump ring that's made from quite thin wire, I can actually put this in place with my hands without the pliers. Okay, so we've got them all ready to go. You can see how this will do up with the necklace clasp. And now I need to add the ribbon. Okay, so I've got my length of ribbon and I've also got my flat nose pliers to hand because this is when you're going to need them. And you can see that the ribbon is meant to sit inside there. But just at a glance, you can see this ribbon is too thick. So all I'm going to do is fold it over before I place it in. Now, 
these clasps that I've got here are made from a very thin aluminium, which means I can I can use my fingers to bend them into place. But I'll show you how you would need to use the pliers if the metal was thicker. So that first one I've been able to bend into place. And then you would need the flat nose pliers to fold the second part over. And crimp into place. So that is now securely holding that ribbon. Okay, you'll notice I have got some excess ribbon there. You could you could literally use um, some embroidery scissors or little snips to trim that off if you didn't want that showing. But to be fair, from the other side, you're not going to see much of it anyway. Um, but you just repeat the process the other side. So again, I'm going to fold the ribbon. in order to get it inside. Fold over one side and then clasp into place. And there you have your necklace that can be taken on and off using the lobster claw grip. And then all you would need to do to finish that as a necklace is to attach your pendant using a jump ring at the end. So this would your pendant would move freely around the ribbon, around the cord or ribbon that you've used. And like I said before, this same technique can be used um, if you're making a bracelet. It could also be used if you were using, instead of ribbon, if you were using chain. So in that instance, you would thread the smaller jump ring through a link on the chain. And you wouldn't need the ri ribbon clasp ends. That bit would be eliminated. You wouldn't need that. You would go straight to the jump ring onto the chain.